All right, so Teddy Long and Ric Flair. Someone mentioned this, and this video, like most other videos, are from a donation, a suggestion. If you want to have a certain video request, if you want to support the channel, if you want to donate to the channel, you can donate to the Cash App in the description, the Thanks button, what have you. Hit the Like button. This individual wanted me to talk about Ric Flair and Teddy Long. Now, um, this is kind of odd. I don't really know why this person wanted this as a video, but whatever. Maybe because recently I've been exposing the fact that Jim Cornette is a bigot, Jerry Lawler a bigot. Like most of the uh, uh, old Southern, old school, nonsensical people in the wrestling industry, this story is very simple. It's not that deep. It's not that deep. Remember I said that, it's not that deep. Now, Teddy Long came up in wrestling at a time when black men were not seen as being of much use or value. You had the history of Bobo Brazil, Ernie Ladd, you know, here and there, whatever the case. Whether it was wrestlers, referees, whatever. To this day, can anyone name me a black booker in wrestling history? Name me a, a black booker. Name me three of them. Name me ten of them. Name me a black man who, had, who has his own wrestling promotion or gets elevated to a position where they have actual power in it. It's like anywhere else in society. And just like anywhere else in society, people who are not black, they have this delusion of uh, racism don't exist and all this nonsense. Eat a dick. Hit the like button. Ric Flair, in fact, called Teddy Long the N-word, as did Ole Anderson. Now, is Ric Flair a racist? I don't believe Ric Flair's a racist. I don't believe Hulk Hogan's a racist. Did he say what he said? Yes. Was it on tape? Yes. But I don't believe he was a, I don't believe he was a racist. I believe he gave racist rhetoric. But I think there's a big difference between Hogan and Flair and Ole Anderson. Now, they still should be shamed and they still need their asses whooped for what they said and how they conveyed it and how they carried themselves. But they express these things in a disgusting form, disgusting sense. But I don't think Hulk Hogan, maybe I'm wrong, but I don't think Hulk Hogan's wearing Confederate bandanas like the Briscoe brothers. I don't think Flair... I don't, I don't think when Flair was in WCW, he didn't push a black wrestler because they were black. Now, Bill Watts, he pushed Ron Simmons because he was black. He pushed Junkyard Dog because he was black and we're in New Orleans and the Negroes will relate to you. Maybe I'm wrong. Maybe Hogan is a racist. Maybe, maybe, maybe Flair is. But maybe there's certain levels to it. <laughs> like, like in, like in um, high school football recru uh, recruiting, you know, you have your one stars, you have your two stars, then you have your five stars. Ole Anderson is a five star bigot. Flair might be a two. Hogan might be a three. If you're going to be something, you should be the best at it, damn it. Eminem, he's like a four-star. <laughs> Check out my other channels in the description of this video. Go subscribe to those if you're not. But Teddy Long, he did express how when he was a referee, he was told by wrestlers in the ring during the match, don't touch me, you N-word. I'm trying not to get demonetized. Again, um, or limited again. Um, these things are true. Those things shook Teddy Long to his foundation as it should. Can you imagine, you know, you're, you're a referee, you're in the middle of a match, the crowd, the, the match, the cameras are rolling, and the wrestler says, don't touch me again, you during a match in the ring shook him to his foundation now my thought would be 
Uh, Teddy Long, uh, what did you do when the match was over? Did you yell, cuss, scream? Did you shoot at him, stab him? W what did you do in response? Now, that's just me because um, I would react in a fashion where um, something's about to happen. But not everyone is like that. Teddy Long, from what I understand, he kept his composure and he was professional. He also expressed that you know, Teddy Long, he worked with Flair in the 80s. They were both in WCW in the 90s. They were both in WWE in the 2000s. And they had segments together. I believe when Teddy Long, I think in 03, when Teddy Long was doing the Rodney Mack, the white boy challenge, which is hilarious. I love that. That was tremendous. The, the What was it? The five minute white boy challenge with Rodney Mack. Back the Mack. <laughs> When he fired D'Lo Brown, <laughs> I love that. When when basically Teddy Long was um, basically he was like uh, it was kind of a copy of like the undercover brother character from uh the Eddie Griffin movie. It was kind of like that, but uh, that was that was hilarious. See, that's that's funny racial humor. There's a difference between racial humor and a racist joke. There's a difference. Cornette and Lawler do racist jokes, not racial humor. One of the funniest jokes I've ever heard was, was uh, I forget his name, but it was a white comedian at the Apollo Theater in the 90s. He was doing a bunch of black jokes, but it was hysterical. He was doing racial humor, not racist humor. There's a difference. And those who don't know the difference go in the comment section crying, defending these typical white males. Ric Flair was wrong. Teddy Long did not do anything to deserve that. But like I was saying, I believe in 03 when uh, Teddy Long was doing his like um, exposing Whitey gimmick, which was hilarious. And he was even on commentary with Lawler. That was funny. See, that was funny. Him and Lawler going back and forth and Lawler saying like black references. That was funny. But Lawler has a history of saying things that are not funny racially. Go check out that video that I just uploaded about Jerry Lawler and Tupac. And it's, it's always these type of people telling you to get over it. I'm sorry, how can you get over something? What, what, what do you mean get over something? Why is it so easy? Why is it always someone who's of another color? Why is it so easy for you to dismiss racist things? Why is it so easy to you? Maybe that's why these people, they think death is funny. They think, they think homosexuality is funny. Why? These people have no morals and no standards. These are the same people. They think uh, Eminem is God. They think Jim Cornette is God. They, they worship celebrity. I, I, I've driven this home, this point home to nauseam. But I believe they had a segment together on Raw. And knowing what you know now, it's kind of like, it wasn't awkward because they're in character. But you could just... Uh, and Teddy Long expressed this when him and Flair were around each other after that incident in the 80s, I believe. It was awkward when they're in WCW together. It was awkward in WWE when they're together backstage, if they were ever around each other. It was awkward. But Teddy Long chose to be professional. Now, also, in the politics of any job, Flair is, you know, he's at a, he, he's at a higher level and you'd be fired probably if you talked to him a certain way or obviously if you fought him or did something that he deserved. So Teddy Long understood that it was tough enough for a black man to exist in the wrestling industry and there was no guarantee that he could have got a job in another company and if he could that it would pay as much as he was probably making at that point if it even was a lot. So that's the story there. It's not that deep and not that deep meaning people like Ric Flair and Cornette and Lawler and Bill Watts and these people, they think it doesn't matter to speak to someone of another race in this fashion. To them, it's not that deep. They think it's just a word being flung around. That's how deep they are in their delusion and their sickness called bigotry. And with that said, I'm up out of here.